Standing between two mounds and placed in great isolation stands the church. A church dedicated to Edith of Polesworth, who was once the sister of one Edward the Elder. Now this church can be found down a winding, lonely country lane, and that only adds to its isolation. But it was built by the Lord of the Manor to accompany his castle in 1150 AD and to serve the people of the village. Welcome to Rambles Through History. St Edith's Church is approached by travelling down a long and winding country lane that runs close to the River Dee. The mound close by was once the site where the ancient castle of Shoklak once stood. Now there are no other ancient buildings within sight of St Edith's, making this one of the most obscure churches across Cheshire. Originally this church was in the possession of St John's College in nearby Chester, but following the dissolution both the rectory and the chapel of St Edith were granted to Sir Henry Fanshawe of London. Now so isolated is this church that in the year of 1921, when the new ordnance survey maps were being compiled, the people compiling it decided not to even name the church and simply put a tiny little cross on the map. Sitting here, I have to say that it is one of the quietest churchyards that I've ever been in since filming here in Cheshire. Built in the 12th century by the Lord of the Manor, it's believed that the church was completed by no later than 1150 AD. However, it's thought that the original foundations are much older, with some believing that the original building was erected as early as 985 AD and put in charge of Wolga the priest, owner of the manor of Caldicott. Now one very positive result about St Edith's being so isolated is that any would-be restorers couldn't find the church, thus the church has been preserved almost intact since the 12th century. Well here on Rambles Through History today we're going to take a look around this ancient churchyard dating back to the 12th century before being extended once again in the year of 1905. Now the exterior of this building has very few refinements except for this beautiful and noble Norman door here on the south side of the church. Built using irregular sandstone blocks, this doorway is believed to have been constructed around the era of 1150 AD. With a semicircular arch with chevron and cable decorations, the arch extends downwards below the current ground level, indicating that the original floor would have been at least 18 inches below the present level that we see today. But how do we come to this conclusion? Well, we just take a look at some of the facts. You'll notice how low the doorway seems, and on one of the doors at the bottom, the hinge is almost touching the floor. But the deciding factor is when you look underneath the Victorian wooden flooring, there's a huge gap going back down to the original surface. As for the 
church doors, well these are ancient too, made from heavy timber studded with iron fittings. There's no doubt that many people have passed through these doors over the centuries and I just wonder who those people really were. Now, unlike many other churches across Cheshire, St Edith doesn't have a grand tower, doesn't have a bell tower and certainly doesn't have a clock. But it does have a bell cot, a bell cot that holds two bells, that was operated by simply pulling on a chain or a rope and today you can still see the grooves within the sandstone where the ropes and chains have worn away for years and years. Like many ancient churches across Cheshire, St Edith's has its own medieval stone cross. Standing here facing the Norman doorway, this cross has like other crosses been stumped. It was in the 17th century when an Act of Parliament was passed called Stumping, meaning that every stone cross in Cheshire and across the country had to be brought down to a required height. Those Puritans certainly didn't like the stone crosses here in Cheshire and beyond. In the 17th century, St Edith's was to become the burial place for victims of the plague of 1625. The church records include many entries about the burials of such people, but two stand out in particular. Now this particular entry within the registers relates to one John and Elizabeth Handley two children who died and were buried here at St Edith's. The entry reads as follows. 1625. John and Elizabeth Handley, children of John Handley the Elder, fell both sick upon Friday the 23rd of September and the aforesaid John the Son deceased upon Sunday the 25th of September around the time of our service and by reason he died so suddenly, and having red specks found upon him, he was supposed to have died of the plague. He was therefore carried to the church upon a drag by his mother Ellen Handley and Randall Gilbert, his half-brother, and was buried in the churchyard without service, bell ringing, or any other ceremonies. Just a few days later, John's sister Elizabeth was also to succumb to the plague. Her entry read... Elizabeth Handley, spinster deceased upon Tuesday the 27th of September, and because she too had red specks found upon her and some sore under the arms, she was likewise suspected to have died of the plague and was buried in her mother's croft near the orchard upon Wednesday the 28th of September. However, on Monday the 3rd of October, Elizabeth was taken up again out of her grave and brought to the church upon a drag by a half-brother, Randall Gilbert. He buried her near to his brother John Handley the Younger. Well, what a sad and tragic account of the passing of both John and Elizabeth Handley at such a young age, taken by the plague of 1625. However, their memories will live on for many centuries to come. No episode of Rambles Through History would be complete without me taking you inside this wonderful church to see the beautiful historical architecture and the artefacts that remain to this day from centuries past. Well, it's an absolute honour and a privilege to be able to walk through these doors today and show you the inside of this beautiful and spoilt 12th century church. As I enter the church, my eye is immediately drawn to the curved plaster ceiling of the nave, complete with the plaster rosettes. The round chancel arch is clearly medieval in date. On the west wall of the nave, we find the royal arms of King George III and dated to the year of 1760.
Now one feature that I'm always looking for when visiting old churches is names etched into the glass. And here at St Edith's, they certainly don't disappoint. For behind me, in the brown wooden frame, is one wonderful example. Now within this box on the glass is etched an extraordinary testimony dated right back to the 18th century. And with the help of this light, I'm going to try and show you what it says. It reads, I, Robert Aldersley, was here on the 31st day of October 1756 with John Massey and Mr Derbyshire. It then goes on to read, NB, the roads were so bad we were in danger of our lives. Now the nave is completely 12th century, however the West War was refaced during the 15th century. Apart from that, everything comes from the 12th century except for the plaster ceiling with rosettes which dates right back to the 18th century. The chancel that I'm stood in dates right back to the 14th century and is approximately the same size as the nave. This makes for a small compact church but it's a beautiful early medieval place of worship. It's here within St Edith's that we find this beautiful oak pulpit dated right back to the year of 1687. If you look below, you can see the date in brass nails, and having travelled around many churches in Cheshire, this is the first one I've seen of this style. The majority of the pews that we see here today at St Edith's can be dated back to around about 1697. They're in keeping with this beautiful small country church and have supported generations of people quite literally. No doubt, after 320 years, they'll continue to be used for many years into the future. Now one thing I always look out for when visiting churches is the font. There's no particular reason. I just believe it's where the start of life begins on our long journey ahead. Here at St Edith's they have a very unusual seven-sided font. Now here on the north wall behind me is a carving, a stone carving representing somebody seated upon a horse. Theories have raged over the years as to its age, whether it's the 10th, the 11th or the 12th century, or even in the case of historic England, they think it's possibly 17th century. You may remember earlier in the film, I mentioned that this church doesn't have a tower, but a bell cot with two bells. I mentioned also that ropes or chains came down so they could be rung to call people to prayer. Well here at the back of the church we're underneath the bells and you can see for yourself the ropes that would have been rung across the centuries to call people to prayer. Well, I'm sure that you'll agree with me what a wonderful historical place St Edith's Church really is, and the history that it holds is absolutely breathtaking. Though isolated, St Edith's is a place of historical beauty, and in many ways its isolation is no bad thing. Indeed, it affords this beautiful structure with its Norman doorway, an extra layer of protection from the ravages of the modern world. Well, 
hope that you've enjoyed your visit here today and a virtual tour of St Edith's Church here in Shochlach in Cheshire. Why not join me again soon as we take yet more rambles through history? <laughs>